G'day, I'm Oric Schiller and today I want to talk to you a bit about talking to your horse. You know, um, in order to, to get along well with horses you really have to understand the nature of horses and even a little bit about their evolution. You know, horses, are, horses evolved on like wide open plains in Northern Europe and they're a social animal so they had to learn to communicate but because they grew up on wide open plains they could see each other, they didn't necessarily need uh, verbal communication, you know, they, they could see each other, they could read each other's body language so that was a lot easier and also they're a prey animal, they're someone's dinner so if they were very loud about what they did predators could find them a lot easier. So what I'm getting at here is horses don't really talk to each other that much as opposed to say like the domestic pig, they uh, evolved in dark forests, you know, dense forests in Northern Europe, okay, but they're also a social animal, so they had to learn to communicate, but they couldn't see each other because the, the forest was so dense. So pigs have like 37, 38, something like that, different chirps and grunts and noises they can make. But if you ever looked at a pig, how many facial expressions does a pig have? It's just one, and they look like this all the time. You don't know if the pig's happy or the pig's sad or whatever. Um, so anyway, horses have a lot of different facial expressions and they really read each other's body language. Um, and that's where a lot of people I see have trouble. They, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, I, you know, I talk to my horse. Because at clinics I'll, I'll advise people, don't really talk to your horse. The best horsemen I've ever seen do not communicate with their horses verbally. You know, um, you think about like the masters, that sort of stuff. Ray Hunt, Tom, Tom Dorrance, those guys. They didn't talk to their horses. Here at this facility here a little while ago, we had a Buck Brannerman clinic. It was a four day clinic where they started a bunch of horses and dealt with a lot of problem horses and Buck Brannerman didn't say a word, okay? A lot of body language involved. Um, but anyway, so at clinics, I'm always telling people, don't, don't talk to your horse because they don't listen. And the people go, no, but, but my horse listens to me. You know, and I don't want to, you know, rain on your parade, but for the most part, people who think their horses listen to them are totally, off track. Um, you know, I'll give you a good example. I was at a clinic a number of years ago and I was saying exactly this and there was a lady there, she goes, well, my horse listens to me when I talk to him. And I said, oh, okay, what can you tell him to do? And she said, oh, I can tell him to walk, trot, canter, stop, back. I said, okay, well, seeing you're uh, standing still right now, why don't you ask him to back up? She goes, okay. So she shortens her reins up and pulls on the reins pretty hard, rocks back in the saddle like this and goes, back, back, back and you know what that horse did back up and so I was being kind of facetious and I said well that's amazing your horse backs up when you say back but but because your horse backs up when you say back and not because of the pull on the reins why don't you sit the reins on his neck and ask him to back up and she said okay so she dropped the reins on his neck and uh, she goes back 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 and she rocked backwards and forwards for quite a while and he finally took a step backwards and being facetious again, I said, well, that's amazing. He backed up when you said back. But because he listens to your voice and not your weight in the saddle or anything, why don't you just sit perfectly still, close your eyes, fold your arms, and ask him to back? And she said, okay. And so she sat perfectly still, fold her eyes, closed, fold her arms, closed her eyes, and she said, back, 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 back. Oh, Celeste, why aren't you backing? I never forget the horse's name, it was Celeste. And she actually smacked it on the neck. She couldn't believe Celeste wasn't backing. So do you get what I'm getting at here? So, you know, most people that think their horses listen to what they say, it's not listening to what they say. Um, I had this conversation recently with a lady and she was saying, no, my horses will trot when I say trot and canter when I say canter. And, and I asked her how she taught it and she taught it the right way. She said the, the word first and the reinforcement came later. If you're going to teach a horse a cue, anything, whether it's a verbal cue or whatever it is, if you use the cue first and the repercussion second, you can teach them to move off the the first cue, whether it's like doing the groundwork, if you've got, say it's the end of your lead rope or your training stick or whatever you've got, if you point first and then use that second, pretty soon when you point the horse will go to avoid that, but if you point and wave them at the same time, you can do that for two years. I've seen, you know, hundreds of people come to clinics say their horse does really good groundwork, but they can't get them to go off a suggestion, it's always off the threat because they didn't ever separate the two. Does that make sense? But anyway, so I was talking to a lady here recently and it sounds like she had taught her horse to do things properly, listen to her properly. And I, I had said to her that I'd read somewhere that horses can have a, um, a vocal range, a vocal, you know, they can learn 
seven to nine words I think it is whereas a dog can learn 42 something like that and she said I oh, know my horses know more than seven or nine words they know a lot more and uh, I said well what what words do they know what do they know and she said oh I can you know she said um, if I go out in the pasture and I say I take their blanket out there I can say put your head in it or if I want to pick up their foot I can say pick up your foot uh, or if I want to go in the barn I can say go in the barn and I said, really? That's amazing. I said, can you tell me those three things again? And she said, sure. She said, I can tell them to stick their head in it. Or I can tell them to pick up their foot. Or I can tell them to go in the barn. And I said, do you realize that each one of those things you just did, you had a big movement for it? I said, I'll tell you what, I will believe you that your horse listens to what you say. Try this when you go home. Because you're sure your horse has listened. And she goes, yeah, they speak, they listen to my words. I said, okay, what I want you to do is go home, take the blanket, walk up to your horse and say, pick up your foot. And right there, the blood drained from her face because she realized he's not going to pick up his foot. You know what I mean? So I said, oh, what I want you to do is I want you to put the blanket in front of his face and say, pick up your foot. I want you to point at his foot and say, get in the barn. Okay? Or I want you to point like that and say put your head in the blanket and see if he actually listens to your body language or listens to what you're actually saying and right then she knew she didn't have to go home and try it she realized she only thought her horse listened to what she was saying her horse was listening to her body language but anyway um, you know when horses think about a lot of people are going to say yeah but horses talk a lot you know I hear my horse talking all the time your horse is not usually telling another horse what to do. They're not issuing a command or a request when they talk. Usually they're emitting their emotions. Like let's say this is a two-year-old stallion here. Let's say there's a horse running up and down over there and he stuck his head in the air and he whinnied at him. He wouldn't be saying, I want you to stop and stand there in the corner. He'd be saying, I wish I was over there with you. Okay, does that make sense? Horses don't ask for things with voice, you know, with, with vocalization. They, they ask for things with body language. Um, I'll show you really quickly on him. So this is a two-year-old rainer, and I'm just starting to teach him to stop off the word whoa. Okay? And I'll show you how I'm going about teaching that. And you know, I've just spent 10 minutes telling you that horses don't listen to your voice. And now I'm going to tell you he'll stop off the word whoa. That's because I'm actually teaching him to stop off the word whoa, as opposed to making him stop and saying whoa at the same time. So what we do with these young rain is teach them to stop off the word well is I'll just ride him down the fence and I'll probably do it at a trot here. I'm just going to trot down the fence. I'm going to say, well, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to trot down the fence. I'm going to say the word and right a second after I say the word, I'm going to tip his nose into the fence, which will cause him to stop and I'm going to go the other way. Okay, I'm going to be trotting. So what I'm not going to do, like this horse will listen to my body. Okay, so what I'm not going to do is trot, 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 whoa because he'll be slowing down off my body, not off the, the word whoa. So I'll trot down there and I will still be posting when I ask him to, when I say the word. So I'll just trot down here, I'm posting, posting, posting. Oh. Tip his nose into the fence, just go the other way. Trot up here, posting, posting, posting. Oh. Tip his nose into the fence, go the other way. Trot down here, posting, posting, posting. Uh oh. And right then, he just slowed down slightly. Now he didn't stop, but he slowed down slightly when I said it. Uh oh. Uh oh. And you just do this over and over and over. Uh oh. Ah, oh, there we go. He just stopped. You notice I fell forward because I was still in the middle of posting. I didn't make him stop off my body language. Anyway, so just remember if you um, want to teach your horse something verbal, make sure you ask that first and then do the thing that caused it to happen second. Don't do them both at the same time or, or do them in reverse order. You know, I see a lot of people lunging their horse. They get a whip and they go crack and trot. The horse is not trotting because you said trot. The horse is trotting because you cracked the whip at him. If you can throw the whip away and say, and trot, and your horse trots right there without you changing your body language, well, your horse has learnt how to, to um, listen to your voice. But anyway, for the most part, horses don't listen to what you say. They listen to your body language and what you do. So um, just keep that in mind. Hope that helps.
See you guys next time.